Flight MH17, a gruesome puzzle now yielding chilling answers after 15 months of sticking fragments onto a frame. The reconstruction demonstrates the effects of the impact and shows the marks where the cockpit was torn from the rest of the fuselage. The high-energy objects that perforated the aeroplane were also found in the bodies of three crew members seated in the cockpit. High-energy objects, a polite word for missile. We've probably never seen a reconstruction this graphic, this searing for relatives. The three pilots died instantly. The 295 passengers and crew, amongst them 80 children, died a minute and a half later when the Boeing 777 hit the ground in eastern Ukraine. And this is what the cockpit looked like Blimey. 24 hours after the crash. So this knot of twisted metal and wires was the cockpit of flight MH17. Look here, you can see the dashboard or bits of the dashboard over there. The control panel. That looks to me like the joystick or part of the joystick. This was one of the pilot seats here. This was, and still is, a war zone. It took months to recover the wreckage. And then, in the safety of a Dutch aircraft hangar, another year of painstaking investigation and reconstruction. Today, this was the conclusion the Dutch aviation authorities reached about the how. A specific type of warhead launched by a Buck surface-to-air missile system. The detonation of a 9N314M model warhead was simulated to calculate a point of detonation as well as the damage that could be expected. So we now know it was a Russian-made Buk surface-to-air missile system, severing the cockpit from the rest of the aircraft where you can see the crack. But it's the who and the why that make this tragedy so politically charged. Officially, both of those are the subject of a separate criminal investigation. But the chairman of the Dutch safety board broke protocol today with this conclusion. The missile, he said, was fired from an area controlled by pro-Russian rebels. Earlier in the day, dwarfed by the dramatic wreckage, he made a more general point. Why was Malaysian Airlines flight MH17 flying over an area where an armed conflict was taking place? The question was on the minds of many people after the crash. The answer is as straightforward as it is disquieting. Almost all operators were flying over that area. And why? Because nobody thought that civil aviation was at risk. In fact, on July the 17th, 160 commercial aircraft passed over this area, a fact that now seems astonishing. And for the sister of Glenn Thomas, one of the 10 British victims on the plane, one small consolation about the 90-second descent. Sometimes people get their phones out, there's no, there's no evidence of anyone trying to take pictures, no text messages on mobile phones that have been found on the ground. So they're sort of like drawing conclusions from that as well, that no one will have known anything. Also today, a few hours in fact before the Dutch presentation, another cockpit, another country, another explosion from every possible camera angle. A very theatrical version of the truth with music to match. This production was brought to you by the Russian arms manufacturer who make the Buk missile. Their rocket scientists completely contradicted the Dutch findings and blamed a missile fired by Ukrainian forces. Flight MH17 and the 298 souls on board were victims of a vicious war in eastern Ukraine. The truth of why they died risks becoming the casualty of an information war between Russia and the rest.